Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about nursing care before, during, and after a seizure. So let's get into it. This first bit is called seizure precautions. So your patient is at risk for potentially having a seizure, so they are placed on seizure precautions. So what's the first thing we need to do with this patient? Is get as much information as possible. Gathering a really thorough history is going to be very helpful. So things we're going to ask, are there any precipitating factors? So prior to a seizure, is there anything that always happens? And now this is going to be very individual depending on your patient. Some will be like, oh yes, every time it's just exactly like this, and they'll give you a ton of detail. Whereas other people will say, honestly, I have no idea. It just kind of happens. So you're going to get a variety of responses and that's okay. The frequency of these seizures, there are people that have seizures every single day, multiple times a day. And then there are people who say, well, I used to have seizures, but I haven't had one in about three years. Right? So asking them, how frequently do these occur? Ask if there is an aura, and if there is an aura, what type of aura? And just as a refresher, I just wrote, an aura is a warning sensation. A lot of times people think an aura is like a light thing, and it can be. It can be a visual thing, but it can be any of your five senses. And then what body parts are affected? Is it your whole entire body is affected or is it just, you know, your upper extremities that are affected? And again, this is very individual. Some people will be able to give you all of this information in great detail and then some people will say, I have no idea, right? It just kind of happened. So the more information we can get, the better. Of course, we're going to check their meds, see if they're on something like an anti-epileptic. We're going to keep the bed low with the side rails up. We're going to pad those side rails just in case. And we're going to have emergency equipment available. Bare minimum <laughs> emergency equipment you want to have is suction, like a yanker suction, an oral suction, and oxygen, like a face mask, so you can give, you know, 8 to 10 liters. And then finally, the charge nurse is probably going to be the one responsible for this, but you might want to let them know like, hey, I have this patient, I'm going to admit them, they have a history of seizures, they're possible seizures, um, and so they will place that patient closest to the nurse's station, so in a room that is close to the nurse's station, just in case. So these are seizure precautions. This is what we want to do in anticipation of a seizure. Now let's talk about what the nurse does during the actual seizure. Now let's talk about nursing care during a seizure. And I'm going to talk about a bunch of different things. Not all of these are expected to be done by one singular nurse. This is an emergency. This is going to be a team approach. So you could be doing one thing and your coworker could be doing another thing and someone else could be doing another thing. Okay? So these are just the potential things that a nurse will do during a seizure for their patient. The first of which is protecting their head and turning them to their side. And when you turn them to their side, you want to tilt their head a little bit forward. We're never going to lift the patient, so don't pick them up during a seizure. If they're in bed while they're having the seizure, you're going to get rid of their pillow and put their side rails up. We want to note the time the seizure began. And sometimes it's going to happen right in front of us, we're going to notice it right away, and then we'll start taking our time from there. Sometimes we're going to walk into the room and they'll already be having it, okay? So whenever you first noticed it, that's your start time. Note the time. Of course, we're going to call for help. You will never leave the patient. So if you notice the patient is having a seizure, you're not going to leave and go get help, right? You're going to stay there with them, put on the light, pull the emergency cord, whatever you have to do, get help, but never leave the patient. If their eyes are open, you can check their pupil size. If their eyes are not open, leave them alone. We're not going to force open their eyes just to check their pupil size. This is if they're already open. We want to clear the surroundings because lots of people are going to come running into the room to help you. So we need to get, you know, furniture out of the way, move carts and things like that so it's safe. Someone will probably get the emergency cart and bring it into the room. Of course, we need to let the doctor know this is going on, right? So we'll call doctor. 
if possible, if we were there when it first began, we want to pay attention to where those movements first began. So did they start in like the upper extremities or something like that? Why? Because this is going to give us a little bit more information as to where this is starting in their brain. We never want to restrain the patient, so never hold them down. If it is a big safety issue, you can maybe like loosely, loosely hold their arms or something like that, but you never want to restrain the patient having the seizure. We're going to give oxygen, usually via face mask, 8 to 10 liters. Suction any secretions, so that oral suction device like the Yanker, we're going to use that. We're never going to force anything into their mouth. That's kind of an old school thing that they used to say back in the day. You know, shove your socks in their mouth or something like that so they don't choke on their own tongue. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. We're not forcing anything into their mouth. Of course, if we can, provide privacy. Loosen any restrictive clothing or jewelry, anything that's going to be tight around the neck. And then note all their behaviors. So a common thing that people note during seizures is lip smacking. That's just an example. There could be a million other behaviors. So things that go along with the seizure activity. So this is the nurse's role during a seizure. Now let's talk about what the nurse does after it's over. Now let's talk about the nurse's role after the seizure is over. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to do frequent vitals. So vitals, including O2, every 15 minutes, at least in that initial period. And then later on, it'll get spaced out. But right away, it's going to be every 15 minutes. Of course, we want to make sure our patient has a patent airway. Sometimes the doctor will order a blood sugar check. This is not a standard order. Some will order it, some will not. It kind of all depends on what they think is going on with the patient. So check your orders to make sure that they didn't order a blood glucose check on your patient. Of course, we're going to examine the patient for any injuries that might have occurred. We're going to reorientate them to uh, what's going on because they're going to be out of it. They probably aren't going to have much recollection of what just happened. They're not going to remember. So you're probably going to say, you know, Mr. Smith, hello, I'm Andrea. I'm your nurse. You're in the hospital. You've just had a seizure and kind of bring them up to speed. Let them know like, hey, what's going on? Provide time for them to express feelings and concerns. Whether this is their first seizure and they're like terrified, like, oh my God, what just happened? Or this happens to them frequently. It's still scary, right? This is an emergency thing. This is a scary thing that nobody wants to have happen to them. So they're going to be upset about it. They're going to be frightened, maybe anxious. So answering their questions, letting them express their feelings, all of that stuff, being a good support for them is really important. Instruct them to not get out of bed without help, right? Even our young, healthy people, they've just had a seizure, call light. Okay, you need to go to the bathroom? Let me know. I will help you. Don't let them get up right away by themselves. And then another one, just like the blood sugar one, you may or may not have orders for medications. Depending on the cause of the seizure and the patient's history, the doctor might give meds right away or they might want to wait. So administering meds as ordered. So that was my video on the nurse's role before, during, and after a seizure. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.